So today was just like any other day, meaning that it rained. I knew that I wanted to make kind of a Boney Vare, Novo Amor ambient indie song. And today the vibe just felt absolutely right. And I knew I needed to do it today. So I got up and one of the first things that I did was sketch this demo. So once it was time to build on the song, I knew that I wanted to use Adams as kind of like a high pad, just playing in the background throughout the whole song. I wanna say real quick as well, yes, Baby Audio did give me early access to this plugin. However, they're allowing me to kind of express any opinions that I have about the plugin. This isn't necessarily a review or a demo, but I will say that this plugin helped me tremendously build this track. I didn't really have enough of the song built. I kind of wanted to just see where it goes. So I decided to start tracking guitar and then we'll just see where it goes from there. Now I have a few nice mics, but I actually decided to use this Shure Beta 57. I find that it has this really dark and warm characteristic. The guitar tone that I was going for is a very subdued, almost just crappy sounding guitar. I wanted to capture the imperfection and I wanted the tone just to be very died down. So I double tracked it, I panned it hard left and hard right. Then I had this third guitar in the middle that would kind of play a higher part above that. If you're curious about what the tuning is for this, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know that Yvette Young and a lot of like the Midwestern emo people, they use this tuning. I definitely wanted the chorus just to feel super wide open as well. So I recorded kind of a more aggressive strum pattern. If I wanna make a guitar strum, but I don't want it to be as bright like with a pick, I typically use the tip of my fingernail. It's very uncomfortable to do it first, but after you do it for a while, you kind of build up whatever that is. And it ends up just feeling much more naturally to play that way. So after I finished recording guitar, I knew it was time to go back and add a couple more synth layers into it. I spent a little bit of time kind of playing with atoms just to see what sounds were available and kind of what struck creativity. A lot of times when I create, I already have something in my head exactly how it's supposed to sound. And this was one of those times I felt like I had to flip that switch off and just kind of listen to what Adams had to offer. And it did not disappoint. So for all of these synth layers, I ended up having to do a major high pass. You got to keep in mind that as we're recording and if we're not really mixing, our ears get fatigued very easily. So we tend to not really hear disturbances, especially in the low end. So I always recommend mixing along the way. Don't get too involved because it's really going to put a damper in the creative process and slow you down. But if you know that you could be really quick with cutting a couple frequencies out, go ahead and do it. I knew I wanted kind of a different tone for the bass line, so I opted for a, I think it was called the Studio Upright Bass in Logic. On its own, it sounds horrible and it sounds really just tacky, but in the context of this, it fit so incredibly well. So after I recorded that, I knew, hey, it's probably a good time that I need to start finishing the lyrics. I personally think that I struggle a lot with lyrics, mainly just because I don't really know what to talk about in songs. I'm 27 now and a lot in my life has changed. 
I'm married, I have a house, I have a dog. So what I used to write about, searching for love, feeling loneliness, not really knowing where I want to be in life, I feel like just isn't really relatable for me to write about anymore. So for the past five years, I've really found writing to be a struggle, especially when it's a very somber and sad sounding song. So I knew in this opportunity, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be sad. I can make it about gratitude. So that's what I did. I just wrote about the things that I enjoy about making a home. And it flipped the tone from sad to bittersweet. So I knew for this, I wanted it drenched in reverb and a bunch of harmonies. And I also recorded those vocals with this microphone as well. See the colors Looking back now, I do wish that I recorded it with a different microphone. There was just something about this microphone specifically, especially in the mid range that I wasn't really happy about. It's almost as if this microphone sounded much better without any vocal processing than any other processing that I could have done with it. So looking back, I probably shouldn't have processed this as much as I did, but lesson learned. <laughs> so after recording the vocals, I knew that I wanted to add some strings in there. I tried both Spitfire Audio's Intimate Strings and Epic Strings, and don't get me wrong, those are incredible sounding sample libraries. I mean, the string sounds that you can get out of those are absolutely incredible. They sound extremely realistic, they're very dynamic, but it kind of just felt uncalled for for this song. So instead, I opted to use the crappiest Mellotron sound that I can find. And I ended up loving that. I think it sounded so much better than anything else that I could have done for that part. And the last thing I did before moving on to mixing was I added a baritone guitar. I wanted this extremely heavy, saturated, just deep and aggressive sounding baritone that's just kind of buried in the background. I also put a slight tremolo on it as well. <laughs> I didn't pan those far left and right, but I did pan them pretty far. And I wanted both of them to sound different on their own as well. So for the left side, I recorded on the neck pickup and on the right side, I recorded on the bridge pickup. All right, so the last thing to do for this project was to mix and master it. Whenever I mix, I tend to put everything in mono first because I feel like I'm able to just get clarity. When everything's over piled on top of each other, it's very easy to hear something bad that stands out. So if you've never tried to mix in mono, I highly recommend it. Now, this wasn't an in-depth mix and master just because, again, the song's not finished. I just wanted to have something that sounds great that I can make for a video. So I only put two plugins on the mastering chain. The first one was a TAC A6400, which is a wonderful tape simulator. The second plugin that I put on the master bus is called Master Desk. And this is like a one-stop shop plugin for mastering. It just adds this tonal character that I find super unique. And I'm all about minimalism and not using a lot of plugins. So there's a lot compacted into it and it gets the job done. Now, this plugin is like cayenne pepper. A little goes a long way. So it's very easy to over compress and to over master with this plugin. But after that, here's the final result.
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. I know this style and how I did this is extremely different from everything that I've ever done. I'm really just trying to find how I can express myself artistically the best. I don't wanna just make videos and slap them up on YouTube. I wanna make, you know, great work. And of course, I always appreciate you guys who actually watch these. I opened my books again for mixing, mastering, production, coaching, mentoring. So if you're in any need of help with your work, send it my way and I look forward to working together. But thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.